boys who will stop your little game. We are the boys who will make you think again. Cause who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler? If you think old England's done, Mr. Brown goes off to town on the A21. But he comes home each evening and he's ready with his gun. So who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler? If you think old England's done. Don't shoot the trigger, Pokey. You squeeze it like a lemon. Like a lemon. Yes, Mr. Jones. <clears throat> That's rather good, Frank. The troop shooting certainly improving, sir. If we go on like this, I have to call us Mr. Mannering's sharpshooters. <laughs> Your turn now, Captain Mannering. What have I got to beat, sir? Uh, well, Wilson? Fraser's got the best score so far, sir. Two bulls, two inners, and one outer. <laughs> I think we could improve on that a bit. Would you like to be a wee wager, Captain Mannering? Yes, I don't mind. We say a shilling. Make it ten. <laughs> not a lot of money. Button down, Captain Mannering. Certainly not. Here, Miss Mary, I'll do yeah. the spotting. <laughs> Excuse me, can you tell me who's in charge here? Uh, Captain Mannering. He's the one shooting the gun. Oh, thank you. You're doing ever so well, Mr. Mannering. That's two balls and one enough. <laughs> you're doing? Who are you? I'm Perkins, the butler from the big hall. I've got a message from his lordship. Mm. He says he's trying to take his afternoon rest, so will you stop shooting? Doesn't he know there's a war on? <laughs> and if his lordship objects to the noise, why does he have a firing range on his estate in the first place? This range is for real soldiers, not home guards. <laughs> and you're only here on sufferance, so will you kindly jack it in, my good man? <laughs> I'll take my ten shillings now. <laughs> what a terrible day, Wilson. I don't think I've ever been so humiliated in all my life. Well, I shouldn't take it too seriously, if I were you, sir. Not take it too seriously? No, I really thought it was rather amusing. After all, it's quite true. We're not real soldiers. Trust you to, to, to stand up for that snooty butler. Well, he was only doing his job. And his lordship wanted to have a little nap in the afternoon. You know, I can remember a cousin of mine with his butler. Some years oh, ago. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just as I thought. You privileged classes will all stick together. Things will be very different after the war. You mark my words. A common man will come into his own. This country will be run by professionals, doctors, lawyers, bank managers. <laughs> and people like you. All right, yes, people like me. You mean common? <laughs> now, watch it, Wilson. I didn't know you were a socialist, sir. How dare you. <laughs> You'll take that back. But you just said that after the war, the country was going to be run by common men like you. I said nothing about common men. I said the common man. People who've, who've got somewhere by their own efforts, not because they're, they're, their father had a title. Their day's over. Well, I wonder what'll happen to them. Huh. They'll go to work. That's what'll happen to them. We shall have a, a true democracy. Well, supposing they don't want to go to work. Well, they won't have any say in the matter. I'm not having it. <laughs> I am not having it. What's the matter, Mr. Hodges? I caught Mr. Blewett using this stirrup pump to spray his green fly. <laughs> there, give me my stirrup pump back. You are not having it back. You abused it. It's my stirrup pump. I, I do what I like with it. It's not yours. It is on loan. <laughs> I don't care. I'm having it back. Let go of that. You wouldn't have done that to me if I was 57 years younger. <laughs> Why don't you stop? 
Stop bullying poor old Mr. Blewett. Soapy water corrodes the washer. Well, I've been using soapy water for 80 years and it hasn't corroded me. <laughs> I don't care. You are not having it back and that is that. I hate you. <laughs> what? I said I hate you and I ain't the only one. What do the kids around here do when your back's turned? Put that mark down. <laughs> I don't believe it. See? He's got feet of clay. I think perhaps I should go, Mr. Blewett. He's not having much to do it, Pat, though. <laughs> the bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> Pat, 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 Pat. Leave me alone! No! No, I can't stand it! I can't take any more, Napoleon! Do you know, I'm the most hated man in this town. Nobody's taking this war seriously. I agree with you there. Well, you know, it's only human nature, sir. The Home Guard's been formed two years, and there hasn't been an invasion yet. And people are beginning to think that we're just wasting our time. That's exactly what Germany wants, isn't it? Lull us into a false sense of security and catch us when we're off guard. Something's got to be done about it. Come in. Yes? Permission for you to see a deputation, sir. Oh, very well. Thank me, but, sir. Deputation into the office at the double quick march. <laughs> Deputation march. What's all this about? Well, sir, after this afternoon's humiliating experience, the men's morals are at rock bottom. Do you know what they're calling us in the town? The geriatric fusilier. <laughs> In some cases, the right. Henry, <laughs> my mum says that home guard training is turning a mild-mannered gentleman like Uncle Arthur into a brute. Oh, Frank, really? <laughs> well, is, do you remember when she asked you yes. to do the washing up? You got cross and you threw a teacup into the sink and it broke. Yes, all right, all right. <laughs> the thing is, men, we've got to do something to make this town appreciate the home guard. Well, I look at it this way, sir. It is our job to stop German paratroopers roaming round the country, ravishing our maidens. <laughs> well, Mr. Menry, do you remember when we took part in that home guard training film? You know, with, uh, when we were dressed as German soldiers? Yeah. But the whole county was in an uproar, wasn't it? Because they thought we was the real thing. Yeah, that's right. So you, you had to go and see the area commander in the morning, didn't you? By the way, sir, you never actually told us what he said to you. <laughs> I don't wish to discuss that any further. <laughs> I know what we should do, sir. We should all dress up as a bunch of fifth columnists and roam the countryside, and that would give the town a fright. Oh, no. <laughs> I think you're getting into the realms of fantasy now, Joe. <laughs> Wait a minute. That might do the trick. Sir, uh, I don't think I'd like to roam the countryside ravishing maidens. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, no, sir, no, it wouldn't work. You see, they'd give the alarm and the army would be on to us like a shot. Not if GHQ already knew about it. Can I come with you, Napoleon? No! No, no, oh, no, we don't want him. No, no, no. Mr Hodges has just had a similar experience. Like us, he's only doing his duty and he's been reviled for it. Yes, you can join us, Hodges. We'll shake this town out of its complacency. Oh, thank you, Napoleon. You and me together, we'll give them a fright they'll never forget. We must all stay together. I don't know what to say, Mallory. I'm not very happy about the idea at all. Well, I think you'll agree, sir, that the people should be shaken out of their apathy. Well, you may have a point there. I inspected the Dimchurch Home Guard platoon last week, and there were so many absentees, it was like walking down a fish queue. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are, you see. Well, all right, but you must keep me informed of your every move. I'm going to call it Operation... Wake up, Warmington on Sea. <laughs> Just call it Operation Wake Up. Will do. Where are you going to set up your HQ? Oh, in the old flour mill just outside the town. I've asked the men to rendezvous there after dark on Saturday night. I've also instructed them not to shave and to look as suspicious as possible. What are they going to wear? Uh, they're going to be dressed as fifth columnists. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do fifth columnists wear? 
I've never met one. <laughs> oh, uh, something very sinister. <laughs> I've also told them to get themselves up as cutthroats and desperados. I see. Well, good luck, Manry. Thank you very much indeed. Cutthroats and desperados. <laughs> you started something. Yes, you did, but you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the light switch? Orbington 382, please. Yes. What? What's my number? Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 633. Hello? Wake up. Roger. Hi. <laughs> Wake up. Roger. My name's not Roger, and I haven't been asleep. <laughs> Who is this? It's me, the Berger. Where's Godfrey? He just popped out a minute, and he's asked me to mind the phone. Well, he's no business to pop out for a minute. When he comes back, give him this message. Operation Wake Up Roger. And tell him he's to ring Warmington 633 at once. That's very urgent. We got that? Yes. I've got it. Six, three, three. Well, Captain Manning's just been on the phone for you. He left a message. Well, what was it? Ah, yes, let me see. Someone named Roger is just going to have an operation and you've got to ring that number at once. <laughs> yes, it must be the hospital. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Six, three, three, yeah. Can you give me 633, please? Could be an appendicitis. Comes on very quick, you know. <clears throat> Is that the hospital? What? <laughs> Is that you? Is that you, Godfrey? Uh, how's Roger? Is he going to be all right? <laughs> what are you babbling about? <laughs> I just had a message that Roger had been taken ill with appendicitis <laughs> and had to have an operation. The message was that Operation Wake Up has started. Oh, oh, oh Operation Wake Up. Now pull yourself together, stand by that phone, and don't go to sleep. Oh, oh, don't worry, sir. I got that part of the message all right. <laughs> Patch, I thought of that first. <laughs> but you can't have an eye patch with glasses. I don't intend to have one. I want to look suspicious. I take the glasses off. Why don't you wear this over the other eye? <laughs> then you'd look even more suspicious. <laughs> now watch it, Fraser. <laughs> photograph of Edward G. Robinson in Scarface. <laughs> Brush the chalk off it. You said we were supposed to look like cutthroats and desperados. I didn't say anything about American gangsters. Bill? 
I think it looks absurd. <laughs> well, you told us to make ourselves look as uh, suspicious as possible. There's a difference between looking suspicious and looking absurd. <laughs> Where did you get it from, anyway? Well, I used to wear it every year at the Tramps Ball at the support. No, oh, did you really? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anything look so stupid in my life. Well, it's not as stupid as wearing an eye patch with glasses. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. uh, I can understand Pike wearing something stupid. <laughs> a young boy, vivid imagination, thinks everything's a game. <laughs> The only reason I can see for your dressing up like that would be to annoy me. Now get those gloves and that hat off. All right, gloves. sir. If you insist, would you mind? Bet you didn't know it was me. You've gone too far. <laughs> Let me be a nun, Captain Manning. Everyone's dressing up as nuns these days. It's in all the papers. No, look, don't argue. Just get it off. But if I get it off, so I've got all my ordinary clothes on underneath, and I shan't look peculiar. Look. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, son. No. <laughs> no, all right. All right, I'll settle down, a lot of you. Now, make yourselves as comfortable as you can for the night. There are plenty of flower sacks about. We move off at first light. Moonlight becomes you. It goes Dude! Halt! Look, this is no good, Wilson. We don't look suspicious or furtive enough. Yeah, but if I were to turn my collar up like, uh, like this, make my eyes shifty like this... <laughs> Any good? No, not really. <laughs> good. Shut. Tell the man to march like a rabble in a shifty and furtive manner. Shut. Two. In a shifty and furtive manner, <laughs> like rabble. We. What? Halt. Don't. And stop that truck and ask the driver where the aerodrome is. Yes, sir, I'll put on a German accent, sir, and that'll make me suspicious. Very good idea. Silly old fool, I nearly ran you over. What do you want? I want to know where is the aerodrome? What aerodrome? Uh, where is the aerodrome? <laughs> you heard what he said. Where is it? You flipping foreigners, you're all barmy. <laughs> Don't take that tone with me, my man. Manreen, you look even more suspicious now. We're getting nowhere at this rate, Wilson. We've got to do something more drastic. Well, the next time somebody comes by, why don't we grab Hodges and start hitting him to make it look as if we're trying to get secret information out of him? Good idea, Uncle Arthur. I'll hit him first. You're not hitting me! All oh, right, Hodges, we'll only pretend. That's right, son. And we'll just pretend like this. Oh! <laughs> Captain mm. Right, Fraser, Wilson, you go grab hold of him. Pike, Jones, start interrogating him. Come on, look frightened, Roger. You won't talk, eh, buddy? Why are you speaking about it, <laughs> stupid boy? For your own talk, huh? Hit him. Oh, hey! Oh, what's going on? Mm. They're asking him the question. Yeah! <laughs> Come on, sir. Oh. <laughs> What do you want to know? Don't tell them! Shut your mouth! <laughs> they want to get secrets out of me! They're fifth columnists! Don't talk rubbish. That's Mr. Jones, the butcher. <laughs> you know who I was. I live in Warmington. I know all of you. And I know you, mate. The last time I was in your shop, you shortchanged me. Uh, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's 
get back to the ship. Sailing tonight, are you? Oh, you shouldn't ask that, old timer. Careless talk costs lives, remember? Oh, sorry. If you was to get down to the crossroads, you should be able to hitch a lift into Dover. It's only 20 miles, you know. Thanks. Come on, Frenchy. Au revoir, mes amis. Good luck. French. Mm. <laughs> You've done that deliberate. You helped me while it hit me. Oh, do stop whining. It's your own fault. It serves you right as people like you give us shopkeepers a bad name. Oh. This is absurd, Wilson. Nobody's taking any notice of us. <laughs> we try them men over there, sir. Good idea. And this time, I'll do the talking. Mr. Menry, yeah. you can use a German accent. No, I'm not. <laughs> Where's the aerodrome? Suspicious. Yes, they certainly do, sir. Perhaps they're fifth columnists. <laughs> well, they're dressed like us. They must be fifth columnists. <laughs> you can't be, sir. Cut my on you. We should ask to see their papers. You're quite right. Come on. Who are you? Who are you? Why are you dressed like that? Why are you dressed like that? Don't repeat everything I say. <laughs> yes, they look like spies to me. Oh, don't be absurd. <laughs> Show us your papers. Show us your papers. Oh, I've had enough of this. In the name of the king, I demand to see your papers. <laughs> <laughs> not until you've shown us your papers. Show us yours. We're not going to. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, oh, we're no, not. No, 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 you can leave me out of this. I've had enough. All right, Hodges. You stay here and hold your tongue. Oh. Ah. Well, that was a very good morning's work, was it not? Yeah, it was a very good morning's work. Yeah, yeah. It was a good morning's work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, that is ein Facket. <laughs> we have seen the aerodrome. Did you notice how many airplanes there were, mein Herr? I made many notes. But we have seen the ships in the harbor. I also I wrote down the numbers of the ships. But we need some more of the information. Oh. Why do we not ask them? <laughs> that is a very good idea. We will ask them the questions and we will get the answers. <laughs> That's done the trick. Right, come on, let's get back to the mill and plan our next move. We can cut across the field. Hello, Mr. Goldfrey. Are you still here? I'm in charge of the telephone. I uh, said, I wonder if you will carry on for me for a few minutes. Yeah, but don't be long. It's nearly time for morning service. All oh, right, I won't be here. Good morning, Vicar. Good morning, Mr. Godfrey. Oh! Oh! Uh, do you mind, Mr. Yateman? I want to get my servant out of the drawer. Morning, Padre. Main wearing anywhere about? No, he's not here. Sunday morning, he ain't here. Where the hell is he? I've no idea. Reverend Timothy Farthing. What? I'm afraid there's no one here. Oh, dear. Well, what's the matter? It's the police over at Dimchurch. They want the home guard. Oh, typical of Mainwaring not to be here when he's wanted. Lazy slacker. All right, I'll take it. Get out of the way, then. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> um, Captain Square here, commanding Eastgate Patoon, home guard, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Good heavens! I say, are you sure? Right, well, I'll be over right away. They say there's a bunch of fifth columnists over there. 
desperados, armed to the teeth, asking questions about aerodromes. <laughs> they were last seen at the Six Bells. I must get over there absolutely at once. Well, where is the Six Bells? It's about five miles away off the Dimchurch Road. Damnation, I've got no transport. We marched over here from Eastgate. Captain Barrick's van's in the yard. What a damn good idea, Padre. Shouldn't you ring GHQ? No, 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 no. I can handle this and you can come with me and show me the way. Oh, no, I don't want to get mixed up in any trouble. Besides, it's nearly time for morning service and I've got to take the collection. Well, never mind that, you old fool. Come on, get out of my kitchen. Out, 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 out. Quick. Which way did they go? They went that way, sir. Right. Don't worry, we'll get them. Ha-ha! Tally ho! Any sign of them, Captain Square? No. Nope. Nothing. on the gas works now. What for, sir? Well, twelve o'clock, everybody cooking their Sunday lunch. We turn off the gas. Right, men! Surround the building! And not a sound! <laughs> Come on, men! <laughs> Follow me! What's that noise going on out there? It's Captain Square. He's got my van! <laughs> He's going to blast us out. <laughs> what are we well, going to do, sir? Well, I'm certainly not surrendering to that idiot square. Well, you know what a tricky, happy maniac he is. He won't shoot. Even he's not madman enough for that. Sinker, you're a fool. You'll take that back, Maywaring. I'll take nothing back. You've been a fool for years. Don't you call me a fool, you fool! I'll report you to the Colonel. You rotten sneak! <laughs> I'll have you kicked out of the golf club! I'm not a member of the golf club. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 